it reminds me, and I, and I, I think I brought this up with you when we, when we were in Round Rock, but one of the things that stood out to me the most about your program, and I mean, look, I grew up in Northwest Arkansas, so, um, you know, I, I knew who you were before just because I, I grew up an Arkansas Razorback baseball fan, and we spent summers at Baum, uh, and I, I always loved the way that Arkansas played under Norm DeBryan. I loved the way that they play under Dave Van Horn as well, but all that to say, having never had really any exposure to Tennessee's baseball program outside of just whenever they would come to Fayetteville, when I saw you guys in Round Rock, it was immediately apparent to me that you had a different attitude, a different swagger about you than every other team there. Like it just, it just exploded out of the dugout. Um, and it was very evident. I, th I think even to the point of, you know, the, the traditionalist baseball fan, I think that, that, they, they, they may even look at Tennessee and be like, well, there might be too much personality there. I love it. And I know your guys love it. Um, so I guess a very long way of just asking a simple question, which is, you know, how do you go about allowing your guys to be themselves and, and in a way that really resonates with the 18 to 22 year old? Yeah, well, um, just, just going back to the beginning of your comments, Coach DeBrian's name brings a smile to my face. I mean, Coach D would come down uh, for a short while, but almost every day to the stadium when, when I was working at Arkansas. And uh, he's a legend and, and kind of things he did bled into Coach Van Horn's regime. And then here I am, a younger guy that um, really started out literally not knowing what I was doing uh, when I first got a job at Missouri and slowly learning, slowly learning. But uh, being there and being around those two type of coaches and that type of program, the blueprint is kind of in front of you. And um, it's almost kind of like you got the answers to the test. Don't screw it up. But you do have to put your own spin on it uh, because Tennessee is Tennessee, not Arkansas. And, and there's no way I'm Coach Van Horn. So, you know, you, you just kind of work with our coaching staff and the current players we have, and you try and make the best you can out of that particular group. And I think for whatever reason, that group just melted into um, – you know, it's easy for me to say now, I don't know how many games we would have won, but it kind of melted into a force. I mean, you could feel the vibe in the dugout when a guy like Pete Durke or Connor Pavoloni gets a big pinch hit in Round Rock. You know, of course, everyone's going to cheer. We just scored a run, but a different kind of uh, sense of camaraderie and just a true love for the fact that they got to see their buddy, um, you know, achieve in that moment. Um, it's a different kind of excitement and a different vibe in the dugout. And I can only hope next year's team can kind of have that click mentality of it's us against the world and uh, we've all got each other's back. And uh, when somebody does something good, we're going to celebrate it like no other. And if somebody struggles and I'm going to do whatever I can to pick him up and, and maybe even kind of come in on the back end and make up for what he didn't execute. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and, you bring up Connor again. It's it's that confidence. Um, your guys, your guys have an unwavering confidence that you don't. I think often see in the game of baseball because it is such a game of failure. Uh, you know, when I'm again when I'm talking to Evan before the event even starts, and he's talking about going four and zero against three really good teams, and then Connor after that after his big pinch hit appearance in Round Rock, uh, we, you know I pick him up outside the dugout after the game, and the first thing he tells me is. Uh, that he knew he was going to do that, that he was ready to go. Like he, he, you know, and I think an inning or two innings in advance, he told me that he was already mentally getting ready for that at bat. Um, and he already saw it happening in his mind, which, you know, as we know, is half the battle. So that, that unwavering confidence um, that, you know, is, I call it, I call it swagger, but really that, that, you know, at its, at its purest form, it's just overwhelming confidence on your team. And it really comes through. Um, so Anyway, all that to say, it's, it's pretty no, cool I, to watch. And I hate to cut you off, but, I mean, I think it's important to mention with a guy like Pav, it comes from preparation. And, again, you know, last dance or Lance Armstrong or whatever example you want to come up with, Mike Tyson, when he had it rolling, that preparation was relentless. So you've got skill and then you have maniacal preparation because Pav, I mean, I, that's an appropriate word, and Russell's the same way. Um, why would you not? be more confident than your opponent. Um, that guy may feel the same way, like Stanford's pitcher Williams in game three. I mean, I don't know that I've seen a pitcher that confident. But you can't get inside your opponent's head, so why worry about it? Just prepare like crazy. And then when you're called upon to do something like pinch hit or start or relieve, 
um, you should be as confident as anybody. And we kind of had a, a big group of guys like that. So even if you question your ability to get it done, you're kind of outnumbered by guys who are confident. And, and maybe that's where that thing kind of happened in the dugout because I think our coaching staff support wise allow me to just kind of sit back and watch in a lot of things. I hate to admit that, but they really do. So they've nurtured that deal, but most coaches would have to admit the players ultimately kind of have to take charge and, and, and that group certainly did it. So um, boy, I, I pray that uh, next year's group that kind of bleeds into their, their locker room vibe as well.